Hi, Tech Rabbit here. Thinking about moving to Windows 11? Yeah, I am too, like quite a few others. Um, I mean, I thought I wasn't going to make this video because this should have been such a simple thing. So this is preparing your um, computer and motherboard configuration so that you can actually get Windows 11 installed. And um, the reason I'm making this video is that some of the steps are contradictory and yeah, downright logical. So um, I'm going to show you what I did um, and then I hope it helps you also configure your computer to be ready for Windows 11. So, let's get into it. So anyway, the first thing that I recommend you do is you get the PC Health Check utility from Microsoft. And I'll put a link to where you can get this from in the um, comments. And then there's a section here in introducing Windows 11, and then there's a check now function. So you hit that, and um, usually it's actually displayed like that, so it's not showing all the results. So, <coughs> and then you should take if if the if this is green, then of course you, know, you don't need to do anything. So your computer's already already ready. But um, if there's something that is amiss, then you have to go to the details. And um, then you can scroll through and see you know, what what specific issue is preventing the Windows 11 compatibility. Now, what we're going to be po focusing on in, in the configuration that I ref refer to is the um, secure enabling secure boot and then activating TPM 2.0 support. So anyway, one of the steps we are soon to be doing. Um, uh, the <coughs> action requires that the recovery partition, which is here, should be assigned to a drive letter. Now, just to illustrate why the you know the error comes up is that you can't actually assign a, a drive letter to the uh, recovery partition. So. Um, you will get an error related to this, and um, I got the error related to this, but it didn't seem to have any effect on the configuration as such. So I just wanted to bring it up here that, you know, that um, why is the utility expecting the recovery partition to have a drive letter since you can't actually assign a drive letter to it? It's, um, yeah, in my case, the recovery partition seems to be some kind of. Um, uh, special partition of a special um, format type, so you can't actually assign a drive letter to it. But anyway, the, just wanted to bring it up front because it will appear later. So, now you need to start up the um, command prompt as administrator, and we need to start checking the disk, boot disk, and see if it's of type GPT, because that's critical for the UIAF to work. So, disk. Test disk. Yep, let me see, we have GPT. So, in my case, because I've already done it, so then it's, um, it looks fine, but if you have the star on the GPT, then it should also be okay. So, we can have a look. Volumes. So here we see all the volumes assigned. see the recovery partition partition for so if you don't have the GPT um, stored then we need to move on to the next phase last command Exit. 
So, if you don't already have GPT marked, then you need to convert your existing um, MBR master root record. And there's a utility to do that. And it's called MBR to GPT. And then you see when you run it, without any options then it actually tells you what the options are. I've included the link to the description of this utility so, uh, so I warmly suggest you read through the text find out what it actually does. Because one of the heart stopping events that can happen is depending on your BIOS configuration if you actually do this configuration and you haven't set up your BIOS yet then um, you can't you presumably you can't boot the computer <laughs> anymore, or it looks like that, before you actually go into the BIOS and change to UI, FI, you know, or the settings that I'm going to go through in, in the BIOS. So just keep that in mind. So I suggest you read that, uh, those instructions. But I mean, it's, it's if you're just interested in running it, then it's this one, and then you need to specify what you want it to do. You want it to, to do the convert. And then you want to allow it to run on the oper full operating system. Uh, full OS. And then you just press enter. I can't do it because I already executed it. So but it will give you a long list of status and at the very last thing it will try and update a config file in the recovery on the recovery partition and if you don't have the recovery partition assigned to a drive letter then it can't access it presumably it looks like it can't access that file and then it will give you an error but uh, that's actually happened to me so I, I haven't got a drive letter on the recovery drive it looks like you can't assign one either so basically, but basically my computer, uh, I mean the system continued working, uh, had, had no, the error had no impact as far as I can see. It might have it later down the road if I try and use the recovery features, then um, it might be that then I will get into problems. But usually if I get into issues in my customized environment where I start needing the recovery <laughs> partition <laughs> then I just uh, I reinstall the operating system. Um, okay, so you just run that and then you get the uh, master boot record converted to GPT and you can actually go and look at the disk information again just to validate that it's actually happened. And um, now we'll move on to the BIOS settings. So now we're in the BIOS and then just the, go to the advanced mode and then we have a look at main and then just to see that I am actually currently using this this BIOS version and then we go to advanced trusted computing and then check that this is enabled that's the security device support. So you see TPM 2.0. Now we have a look at the boot, CSM compatibility, and um, keep it enabled. And then boot device control is UFI, VFI, or legacy um, support. And then for different devices, then that's the main one of interest is this one. So then you say we have five drives first. And then we have a look at secure boot. And this is the setting that is the most confusing. I mean, if you drop it down, you have Windows UE FI mode. And that you shouldn't use. It should actually be other modes. Now when I was playing with this, I had to actually come in here and play around with this boot option, like what it should actually try and boot from first. And it was a little bit confusing, um, the first few boots attempts, but I actually uh, found out that the one that works for me is this. So you select the one that says really Windows Boot Manager, whatever disk, and then it um, actually worked fine.
So, as this is what the BIOS configuration looks at the time of making the video. Of course, new BIOS versions come all the time, so check you're actually using the same BIOS version. There is no guarantee that Microsoft won't um, change the way Windows 11 works, um, booting-wise. So, again, a uh, little caveat that this instruction may already be out of date. But this, this is what worked for me on the date of making the video. So, I uh, hope you found this informative. Um, please consider subscribing. Hit the like button if you thought it was useful. Um, merch is available, or if you just like to buy me a cup of coffee, the links are in the, in the comments. And um, all the contributions will go towards developing the channel. And uh, see you in the next one.